Hello everyone and welcome back to Not The Shop. As you can see I'm in a field and today I'm going to be working on a big project that I'm going to do which is making a gate for this field. The gate will be made out of the logs that you can see behind me. It is Robinia wood which is a pseudo acacia tree um, which grows in Belgium. I don't think it's actually native, but at least it grows here. Um, so yeah, the premise of this gate is that it's balanced on a central beam that's secured into the ground with um, a complete tree that is balancing on this uh, center point. So we have on one side of the tree, we have the root end, which is going to function as a counterbalance for the gate that is hanging off the other end of the tree so that way you can open a big heavy gate uh, with basically minimal effort because it's counterbalanced by the root of the tree so yeah today we're gonna start with the layout selecting the trees that we're gonna use and maybe start uh, with the debarking also uh, we'll see how far we get it is like maybe two or three degrees celsius outside today um, as you can see there's still some frost on the grass i bought myself some wellies with a furry inside to have nice warm and dry feet because over there there is also a little lake so this field sometimes is underwater so it's quite soggy although right now it feels solid enough for me to do my work. So let's, let me show you the surroundings real quick. As I said, here we have the wood. And this is the field. There's not really going to be animals kept in this field. It's just uh, a field used for growing grass and other stuff for animal feed. So this is where we just were, this is where the gate will be in the field and as I mentioned the lake is just right here a few meters away. There's some nice water birds there. Let's see. Can zoom in. As you can tell, the lake is actually frozen a little bit right now. If you needed any more proof that it's cold today. So, there's a few different things we need from these logs to make this gate. All right, so I put all the wood separated into the different types and uses. So we have a bit of an overview. Once again, we have the main log that will form the structure of the gate. We have a long log that's a bit bigger, which will be re into at least three planks um, to frame the gate. Then we have some medium sized limbs that are not that long. One is a bit longer, so maybe we can get two regular ones out of it. And these will be um, hanging from the main log and be connected by the planks of this longer log to form the body of the gate. So this will be like the, the styles and this will be the rails the planks then so these are the fourth trees that we have there's three of them and I only need 
two of them for this project so we can select a few and maybe use the third one for something else or maybe keep it because it's hard to find a fourth tree in the commercial market if you need it so these logs were um, hand selected from a local wood area um, I know a guy there who sourced these for me and then the final one <coughs> is just a good sized um, with no branches log that will probably be the pivoting point um, where the big tree is balancing on All right, so we have it laid out like this. You can see these two beams that are already in the ground uh, for protection of the trees. So the big tractors and stuff like that don't hit the trees while entering the, the field. So we use this as our reference point. We strung a line between them, which is parallel or more or less parallel with the road and we want the gate to be also parallel with this line so we have made a little drawing right here so on the bottom of the page we have the road these two dots are the beams that are already here the distance between them is 11 meters and 90 centimeters so we have the gate which is going to be right here so that means it's six meters in the field uh, and it's centered on this line meaning there's an equal distance between um, the already present beams and the ones that I'm gonna put in the field so the opening between the two fence posts is 4 meters 80 meaning there is 3 meters 55 on either side of these posts in relation to the already existing posts only 6 meters further into the field we need this distance because of the swing of the gate the gate will swing open in this direction while the counterbalance is moving in this direction so we have this distance 
here between the two beams that I will put in the ground um, which is also the distance of the gate opening which is 4 meters 80 which means we have 1 meter 20 extra um, between the road or the string line that we strung here and the first post so this one is one of the forked posts and this one is one of the forked posts meaning that the gate will uh, reach a little bit further than this post maybe like 50 centimeters or something like that which leaves uh, 70 centimeters of uh, space that is extra between the road and the gate itself so the rest of the openings will be filled with bushes by the owner um, so for me this is a position of the gate that I just marked out with uh, this chalk spray paint that is biodegradable and will be washed away by the rain and the weather itself so yeah now we have the layout now I'm gonna position the corresponding beams uh, on their location and then see where we go from there Alright, so I have them positioned. Right now I'm going to try and move the big tree log with the root section on it. But first I'm going to use the axe to remove some of the wild roots that we don't need. Uh, and clean it up a little bit. It's going to be... It's, it's going to make it easier to move it and drag it along the floor. So yeah, let's get the axe out and do that. So anytime you have a root system or a log that has been on the ground, you know, there's dirt, there's stones, there's anything that will dull your axe, um, like sand and, and many other things that is lodged into the bark and in other stuff. So yeah, um, just know that when you do this, your axe is going to be dull or may maybe even chipped uh, after that. So yeah, don't use your best axe. So I'm going to be using my Gebrüder wireless bag, soling and felling axe. It's pretty sharp still from when I last used it. Um, you can see the forge marks in it. I think I have a restoration video of this somewhere on YouTube, maybe, or maybe not. Anyway, let's chop away these roots.
So as the roots on the bottom are still there and the tree is perched up a little bit, I'm gonna use this opportunity and try my debarking tool to remove some of the bark and maybe cut some more of these little roots. So yeah, let's give this tool a try. Okay, I'm gonna flip over the big tree and chop off the roots of the, uh, the root end and then maybe if I can do it alone, uh, drag it to the place where it will be more or less. I'm gonna try and be a little bit more careful about which roots that I want to remove and which that I want to keep to keep the character of the root ball. So I also have a new saw and I haven't had a chance yet to use it. So uh, here it is, let's try it.
n'était pas. Alright, so here you have the, the tree. I have it propped up right now in the orientation um, with the bulk of the weight of the root system pointing downwards. So this will be probably the natural way that the tree will want to sit. Um, it's more or less in place. So we can get an idea what it will look like. So right now I'm just gonna remove some more bark of the, of the other pieces, the standing beams um, and start with that. We'll keep working until the sunlight runs out. So yeah, let's go. As we are losing the last light, 
and with the geese in the background let's wrap up this first day of working on this gate so we selected most of the wood that we're gonna use we laid it out and we started with the debarking of the pieces that we're gonna use so we have one of the forked beams ready the pivoting beam ready and a big part of the tree has already been debarked and the root ball has been cleaned up so the debarking tool that you saw me make in the last video it works great um, I would maybe straighten out the hook a little bit so you can use it more um, in a 19 degree angle to the to the shaft uh, which will, would be more useful for manipulating some stuff um, or a debarker without the hook would also be uh, beneficial because sometimes it gets in the way but yeah next time uh, next week probably we'll choose another nice day to come back and continue with the debarking um, and then we'll also have to find like an auger bit to, to drill out the holes for the posts and I will make a big fire and burn the ends of the beams that will be in the ground so it has a little bit of protection which is pretty cool and traditional technique so now I'm just gonna clean up and go home